a Japanese pagoda tree, which is in the Legumaceae family. And it's just a, a, one of the kind of strange trees that Mrs. Thompson brought to the site. Next to it, though, is a beautiful copper uh, beech tree in which uh, we've been treating some of that with, uh, for Phytophthora. And uh, Phytophthora has been a disease that has attacked um, the soil-borne pathogen that has uh, taken out many of the beech trees in the Northeast. And actually, we've been doing some treatments um, that have been very successful on the 14 different varieties of beech trees that are on the site. Um, we've lost a couple, mm -hmm. but uh, we've also um, turned around a few too through um, agrophosphates mm -hmm. and um, pactobutasol, which is a, uh, a soil um, you know, fungicide that we put in the ground, which is nice because it deteriorates over three or four years and we're saving some of the beech trees. So, what are yeah. the symptoms of the trees do have that? Um, bleeding cankers. So actually on the main bowl, there'll be a, a, a circular red, almost bleeding like um, fun, fungus, you know, that's on, on the stem. Looks almost rusty in color. There it almost go. looks like rusty water is oozing out of the trunk and stains yeah. down the trunk. Mm -hmm. um, matter of fact, one of the, um, the other names for it is bloody spot disease because it looks like little bloody spots on the trunk. And the cambium behind that uh, gets killed off by the Phytophthora fungus. And w where the real danger for the tree lies is when a number of those small cankers begin to coalesce into a single defect and you lose a large portion of the trunk. Uh, working as a consultant with an architect on a property in uh, Dobbs Ferry, uh, we started out with a tree that was in very prominent, not nearly as big as that, but a very prominent tree on the property. And it was probably 25% affected in the lower six or eight feet of the trunk with bleeding canker and they wanted to save it and, and money was not an object so they decided that they were willing to give it a shot so I, I went up to the folks at Cornell and said what do you think and they said well use agrifos and a product called pentrobark which helps it to penetrate the bark and you know do the trunk also do a drench under the whole drip line make sure the tree never suffers for uh, drought symptoms or anything like that there had been a driveway under part of it at one point, so we uh, came in with an air spade and we did a series of radial trenches to loosen up some of the soil, added back in stuff that would help with percolation of water as well as give some aeration to it. There are about eight years into this process now. We lost all told about 30% of the circumference of the trunk. They know that they're only buying time, but what they want to do is get about 20 years out of the tree and then they know they'll have a structural problem. Uh, but since it was, it, it was an opportunity to do this as, a, as an experiment, uh, we were treating three times a year, twice in the spring, once in the fall. Phytophthora tends to be a cool season organism. And so it's when temperatures are around 70 degrees that it's most active. So once it gets hot in the summer, it goes dormant. And then it becomes active again in the fall. So you try to hit it at its active periods. Um, something else with beech trees, it's just an interesting little factoid, is there's a lot of different uh, cultivars of beech that are out in the nursery trade. There's purple beeches, there's fern leaf beeches, there's weeping beeches, there's vestigia beeches, and all of those are European beeches. The ones that the American beech, uh, there's very, very little in the way of nursery activity for because it tends to form clonal communities from its root system. And so nurserymen don't like to have it in their nursery because when you dig the thing out, if you're bowling and burlapping it, you're left behind with this little forest that comes up right after it and you've got to deal with it. So the nursery industry has not done much to speak of with American beech, but they've done a great deal with the European beeches. And if you look at the leaves, you look at the architecture of the leaf, American beech has very distinctive teeth along the edge of the leaf and the veins. The secondary veins go right from the mid vein on the other side of the leaf, right to a tooth. And it's a straight line, right from one to the, end, to the next. The European beech, the veins come out from the mid vein and they start to curve as they reach the margin of the leaf and then they just sort of disappear. And you don't have any teeth, you've just kind of got a wavy margin, usually with a little bit of silly, a little hairs along the edge. So think of it this way, the way to remember it is Americans get to the point, <laughs> but Europeans are more cultivated. <laughs> with the beaches and the disease issues, does it happen in the younger? Trees? I'm sorry. Or is it more in the more It tends to be in the more mature trees and the more stressed. If you've got five trees, four on each corner and one in the middle, 
The one that's going to end up with problems is the one in the middle. Okay. It's got a limited root system and a limited, limited canopy. Okay. Yeah.